सुनी इतिहास काउंसिल सुरेश चेयरमैन वर्सेज इलेक्शन कमीशन ऑफ अस्थान By a majority of eight, comprising Justice Syed Mansoor Ali Shah, Muni Bakhtar, Muhammad Ali Mazhar, Aisha Imalik, Atar Minila, Syed Hasan Ali Rizvi, Shahid Wahid, and Irfan Sadat Khan JJ's. The instant appeals are decided in terms of the short order of the majority of even date, and the other petitions, including leave petitions and CMAs, are decided accordingly. There are a number of orders, so I will let the senior person heading that particular order to read the entire order or whatever he wants to read therefrom. Shah Sab, you have a copy. Is this original? Yes. Me pas suni hai. Me pas report. Original mein aap kar diye. Majority order, and I repeat, it is by myself, Justice Muni Bakhtar, Muhammad Ali Mazhar, Aisha Malik, Atar Minnalla, Sayyid Hasan Ali Rizvi, Shahid Wahid, and Irfan Sadat Khan. For detailed reasons to be recorded later, and subject to what is set out therein by way of amplification or explanation or otherwise, these appeals are decided in the following terms: Number one. The impugned judgment dated 25th of March 24 of the learned full bench of the High Court is set aside to the extent it is or may be inconsistent with this order or the detailed reasons. Number two, the order of the Election Commission of Pakistan dated 1st of March 2024 is declared to be ultra vires the Constitution without lawful authority and of no legal effect. Three. The notifications of various dates, whereby the persons respect, respectively mentioned therein, being the persons identified in the Commission's notification dated 13th of May 2024, have been declared to be returned candidates for reserved seats for women and minorities in the national and provincial assemblies, are declared to be ultra vires the Constitution, without lawful authority and of no legal effect, and are co. From 6th of May 2024 onwards, being the date an interim order was made by the court in CPLA number 13289 of 24, the leave petitions out of which the instant appeals arise. Four. It is declared that the lack or denial of an election symbol does not in any manner affect the constitutional and legal rights of a political party to participate in an election, whether general or by, and to field candidates. And the commission is under a constitutional duty to act and construe and apply all statutory provisions accordingly. Number five. It is declared that for the purposes and within the meaning of paragraphs D and E of clauses 6 of Article 51 and paragraph C of clause 3 of Article 106 of the Constitution, Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf (PTI) was and is a political party, which secured or won the two terms being interchangeable general seats in the national and provincial assemblies in the general elections of 2024, as herein after provided. Six. During the course of the hearing. <coughs> of the instant appeals on 27th of june 2024 lenet council for the commission placed before the court a list of 80 returned candidates for the national assembly now mnas setting out in tabular form particulars relating to their election lenet council made a categorical statement that the commission stood by the data so provided to the court In particular the list contained three columns marked as follows number 1 statement on nomination form given declaration and oath by the person nominated that is i belong to number 2 certificate of party affiliation under section 66 of the election act 2017 and number 3 statutory declaration affidavit accompanying section 66 certificate number 7 In the peculiar facts and circumstances of the general election of 2024 it is declared 
that out of the aforesaid 80 returned candidates, now MNAs, those being 39 in all and whose particulars are set out in an extra A of to this order, in respect of whom the Commission has shown PTI in any one of the aforementioned columns in the list, were and are the returned candidates whose seats were and have been secured by the PTI within the meaning and for purposes of para 5 above in relation to Article 51 provisions. Para 8. In the peculiar facts and circumstances of the general election of 2024, it is further ordered that any of the remaining 41 returned candidates out of the aforesaid 80 which I mentioned in the next year B, may within 15 working days of this order file a statement duly signed and notarized stating that he or she contested the general election as a candidate of, a polit of the political party specified therein. If any such statement is or filed, the Commission shall forthwith, but in any case within seven days thereafter, give notice to the political party concerned to file within 15 day working days a confirmation that the candidate contested the general election as its candidate. A political party may in any case, at any time after the filing of a statement as aforesaid of its own motion, file its confirmation. If such a statement is filed and is confirmed by the political party concerned, then the seat secured by such candidate shall be forthwith deemed to be the seat secured by that political party for the purposes of para 5 above in relation to Article 51 provisions. The Commission shall also forthwith issue and post on its website a list of returned candidates, now MNAs, and seats to which this para applies within seven days after the last date in which the political party may file its confirmation and shall simultaneously file a compliance report in the court. Paragraph 9. For the purposes of paragraph 5 of this order in relation to Article 51 provisions, the number of general seats secured by PTI shall be the total of the seats declared in terms of paragraph 7 and those, if any, to which paragraph 8 applies. The PTI shall be entitled to reserve seats for women and minorities in the National Assembly accordingly. PTI shall, within 15 working days of this order, file its lists of candidates for the said reserved seats and the provisions of Election Act 2017 and the Election Rules 2017 shall be applied to such lists in such manner as gives effect to this order in full measure. The Commission shall, out of the reserved seats for women and minorities in the National Assembly to which para 3 of this order applies, notifies, notify as elected in terms of the Article 51 provisions that a number of candidates from the list filed uh, or as the case may be to be filed by the PTI as it is proportionate to the general seat secured by it in terms of paragraph 7 and 8 of this order. Paragraph 10. The foregoing paras shall apply mutis mutandis for purposes of Article 106 in relation to PTI for the reserve seats for women and minority in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Punjab and Sindh Provincial Assemblies to which paragraph 3 of this order applies. In case the Commission of PTI need any clarification or order as to give effect to this para in full measure, it shall forthwith apply to the court by making an appropriate application which shall be put before the judges constituting the majority in chambers for such orders and directions as may be deemed appropriate. Thank you. Very grateful. Uh, now I call upon Justice Yaya Afridi, who has written a separate short order. Do you want to read it or you want to summarize it? Okay. For reasons to be recorded later, civil appeal number so-and-so, civil petition number so-and-so, CMA number so-and-so are dismissed in terms that. Sunni Itihad Council does not fulfill the conditions prescribed for a political party under the enabling provisions of the Constitution of Islamic Republic of Pakistan and the law to be allowed allocated reserved seats for women and non-Muslims in the National Assembly or the Provincial Assemblies. Pakistan Tehreek e Insaf fulfills the conditions prescribed for a political party under the enabling provisions of the Constitution and the law to be allowed allocated reserved seats for women and non-Muslims in terms that 
a candidate for a seat in the National Assembly or the Provincial Assembly who in his or her nomination paper has declared on oath to belong to PTI and duly submitted a certificate of the same political party confirming that he she is the nominated candidate of PTI for the respective constituency shall remain so and cannot be declared independent unless he she submitted a written declaration to the Election Commission of Pakistan or the returning officer to be treated as a candidate of another political party or as an independent candidate. A returned candidate to a returned candidate to the National Assembly or the Provincial Assembly who in his nomination paper has declared on oath to belong to PTI and duly submitted a certificate of the same political party confirming that he she is the nominated candidate of PTI for the respective constituency shall remain so. And this consistent position maintained by a returned candidate throughout the electoral process should be legally recognized by the Election Commission of Pakistan and such returned candidate cannot be treated as a returned candidate of any other political party or as an independent candidate, returned candidate. And thus the reserved seats for women and non-Muslims are to be allocated, all allotted to PTI accordingly. A candidate nominated, number three, a candidate nominated by PTI for a constituency of a National Assembly or a Provincial Assembly who after being declared returned, joined another party or sought to be treated as an independent raises serious concerns about disregarding the trust reposed in him or her by the voters, thus undermining the will of the will of the people. And number four, the legal implications, affects, consequences of the determination made above in paragraph 2.2 2 and 2.3 as well as the actions or inactions of Election Commission of Pakistan thereon. Although deeply concerning, have not been challenged in the present appeals and petitions, and the persons who would be affected or aggrieved are not parties before this court. Therefore, issuing a definite direction to the Election Commission qua the allocation of specified number of reserved seats for women and non-Muslims to a political party in the National Assembly and the Provin Provincial Assembly would not be legally appropriate accordingly. The Election Commission of Pakistan is directed to decide the allocation of reserved seats for women and non-Muslims to political parties in the National Assembly and the Provincial Assembly in the light of the determinations made here and above, after providing opportunity of hearing to the parties concerned, and if required, revisit its earlier decisions on the matter. The need will be done within seven days of receipt of this order. Thank you. Thank you. This is Aminuddin Khan, sir. For the reasons to be recorded later, I dismiss the appeals, petitions, as well as CMAs, and the judgment of the Peshawar High Court is upheld. Has anyone agreed with you? My Lord, I, Justice Naim Akhtar, concur with Honorable Justice Aminuddin Khan. And for the reasons to be recorded later on, I am also dismissing all the appeals, petitions, and CMAs and uphold the judgment of the Peshawar High Court. Thank you. Now I read Justice uh, Jamal Khan Mandukhe's order with which I agree. For the reasons to be recorded later, we dispose of these appeals, petitions, and miscellaneous applications through a short order as under. These matters involve a controversy regarding the allocation of seats reserved for women and non-Muslims. The Sunni Itihad Council, SIC, did not contest the general elections of the year 2024. SIC, which demands allocation of reserve seats on account of inclusion of independent parliamentarians in it, did not secure a single seat in the National Assembly or any of the provincial assemblies, nor submitted a list of its candidates for seats reserved for women and non-Muslims. Thus, it is not entitled to any of the reserved seats either in the National Assembly or in the provincial assemblies. 
impugned judgment in order dated 1st March 2024 of the Election Commission of Pakistan here and after ECP to such extent is upheld. Under Article 51 within bracket 3 of the Constitution of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, the total number of seats in the National Assembly shall be 326, out of which 60 seats are reserved for women and 10 seats for non-Muslims. Such right of women and non-Muslims has been guaranteed by the Constitution. They shall be elected in accordance with law through proportional representation system of political party, parties list of candidates on the basis of total number of general seats secured by each political party from the province concerned in the National Assembly and the Provincial Assemblies as provided by Article 51 within bracket 6 clauses D and E of the Constitution. Therefore, they cannot be deprived of their such right by leaving these seats vacant and all reserved seats shall be filled in as provided by Article 224.6 of the Constitution. The impugned judgment of the High Court and the said order of the ECP to the extent of proportional representation distribution of seats amongst the parties which won and secured seats is also maintained. However, since the ECP calculated and allocated the seats to the parties by the exclusion of the Pakistan Tariqe Insaf, PTI, candidates, therefore to such extent the impugned judgment of the High Court and the order of the ECP are set aside. During the hearing, it transpired that a number of candidates had submitted their nomination papers with a declaration on oath that they belonged to PTI supported by an affiliation certificate of the said party. But some did not submit affiliation certificates of PTI. They are members of national and respective provincial assemblies affiliated with PTI. The ECP, by misinterpreting the judgment of this court dated 13 January 2024, which was regarding non-holding intra-party elections in PTI, wrongly mentioned the said candidates of the PTI as independents in Form 33 of the election rules. The ECP had no authority to declare validly nominated candidates of a political party to be independent candidates. Similarly, a candidate once declared himself or herself as a candidate of a political party could not subsequently resign from his candidature of a particular party after the last date of withdrawal of the nomination papers. It is important to mention here that neither the PTI nor any candidate affiliated with PTI approached either this court before or during the hearing of these proceedings or the High Court to challenge the decision of the ECP, declaring them as independents. However, in view of the fact that the appeal and the petition are a continuation of election proceedings before the ECP, we can look into the wires of the decision of the ECP in the light of the provisions of Article 51D and E of the Constitution, read with Sections 66, 67 and 104 of the Elections Act 2017, to safeguard the interest of women and non-Muslims. As a consequence whereof, the candidates who had submitted the nomination papers and or affiliation certificates by the last date of withdrawal of the nomination papers declaring that they belong to PTI and had not filed a document showing affiliation with another political party should have been treated as parliamentary as the parliamentary party of PTI. But needful was not done by the ECP. Consequently, the PTI as a parliamentary party is entitled to the reserve seats to such extent that ECP should recalculate and reallocate the reserve seats amongst the political parties including the PTI as provided by Article 51, 6, D and E of the Constitution. The candidates who had submitted the nomination papers by 24 December 2023, which was the last date of submission of nomination papers, and had declared themselves either as the independent candidates or left blank the relevant column in the nomination papers declaration and were elected, shall be considered to be independents. 
SIC is a registered political party and every independent member of parliament and the provincial assemblies has a right to join it. All those who join the SIC are presumed to have done so out of their own free will. None of them claim to have joined SIC because of any misunderstanding of any judgment, the law, compulsion, coercion or undue influence. And it is not for this court to presume otherwise. We must ensure that words are not read into the constitution nor to ascribe artificial meaning to commonly understood words. We must also abide by validly enacted laws and must not do anything either to hinder or to facilitate a political party by ignoring the law's mandate. I think it, this concludes today's proceedings. Thank you everyone. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks you so very much.